October 25th, 2022 select board meeting. This meeting is being recorded. Good evening and welcome to the select board meeting for the town of Southwick, October 24th, 2022. If we could start off by the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. All right. We have myself here, Chairman Russell Fox. We have Vice Chairman Doug Moglin. Uh, Mr. Perone cannot make it here tonight. Uh, we have Chief Administrative Officer Carl Steinhardt on Zoom. We have Administrative Assistant Robin Solak here. Uh, the first thing we have on the agenda is public comments. That gives anybody an opportunity uh, to make any statement uh, to the select board. Uh, I'll start with people in the room first. Is there anybody in the room that would like to make a statement? If so, if you could please stand, state your name and address. Not all at once. Not, not all at once. I'll, I'll pass out numbers to <laughs> now serving. Uh, and just so people know, there's a problem on the amended agenda on the website. If um, you're talking to anybody, if they go to the website for on the calendar, the first posted agenda, if you click on that link, it'll work. Or if you type the meeting name in, um, meeting number and password, you can get into the meeting. So if something happened when they posted the amended agenda that messed up the Zoom link. Right. And we have unlocked the front door. So uh, we do have access <laughs> now. <laughs> yeah. so, um, is there anyone on Zoom? Uh, I think I took care of a, Ms. Joanne. I think I headed off for a question at the pass. But uh, is there anyone else on Zoom that has any public comment? Okay, all right, then we will begin. But before we begin, uh, I, I stated Mr. Prone couldn't make it. Are, are you feeling okay? I was gonna cancel the meeting. I didn't know whether you would still be in mourning. I have some tissues here for you. Now listen. You know, you know, I, here in Red Sox Nation, we feel terrible that the Yankees got swept by the Houston Astros. And I, you know, I know that it must be painful for you, but there's the tissues right there in case you need them. That's well, no point. there's <laughs> 27 other occasions in which uh, the Yankees were able to do their job. But uh, no problem, Mr. Chairman. All right, all right. I, I, I will need those in case I have to watch a video of your radio show from last week oh, again. All right. <laughs> but uh, thanks for the tissues. <laughs> I all right, just want to yet. make sure. <laughs> All right, uh, I'd like to acknowledge payables warrant number 2312B dated 10-18-2022 in the amount of $438,475.55. I need a motion to accept the minutes dated 10-17-2022. So moved. I will second that. Roll call vote. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. Okay. We're moving on. The first thing on the agenda, uh, we're going to uh, remove that because uh, we're going to um, address it under another method. So the next thing on the agenda would be to authorize the chair to sign a memorandum of understanding with UPSEU clerical unit for acting assistant treasurer, town treasurer clerk collector backfill. So I need a motion on that. And that is where we're going to be uh, taking one of our personnel in that office and making putting them into an acting position of assistant town treasurer clerk collector. Right, so after you authorize the chair to do that, we should follow up with a companion vote on the person's name being placed into the acting role. Okay, we got a motion. We'll, we'll cover that. Next. I'll second it. Roll call vote. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. Okay. Uh, so that passes. The, the name of the individual is Kathy Rovati. That is correct. It's Kathy Rovati. And under the statute, because this is all three positions, some of the appointment power is by the treasurer, collector, town clerk herself, and then some of it is by the board for different individuals. So you just want to make sure that you um, 
you know, appoint this individual to those three uh, positions in an acting capacity, and you concur with the current treasurer collector, Clerk Michelle Hill. Okay. All right. So, are you satisfied with our action, Mr. Steinhardt? Um, I would just do it as a separate vote to appoint it. Okay. To appoint her. I'll make a motion to appoint Kathy Rivati to that okay. position. Then I will second that. And we'll call vote. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. All right. And onward and upward. Okay, the next is a finance committee reserve request for the Conservation Commission part-time secretary funds. Uh, we are running low and the request is for $3,600. And that'll get us to the end of the fiscal year. Yeah, that was the number that um, the estimate, I think, between Laura's office and what Sabrina worked out with uh, Dave McWilliams. Okay, so I need a motion. Uh, Doug Mogan will make the motion. Russ Fox will second the motion. Roll call vote. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. And Mr. Fox, this was something that Dave McWilliams had come to me and talked about. The conservation secretary is normally funded through Fees collected at the Conservation Commission, it's been kind of a slow year, so they, there was a slight risk of running out of secretarial salary line item that um, to support the, the need of that board. So this will put the funds available for the secretary to continue for their... Right, so this will need to go in front of the FinCom. Mr. Deedy, when is the FinCom meeting again next? This is the chairman of the finance committee, Mr. Didi, you're muted. There you go. Hi, guys. I believe we're meeting the 31st on Halloween. Okay, so this will go to your board for, for action. Thank you. Thank you. Did you give me that? Okay. All right, the next thing on the agenda is a... Uh, uh, vote to accept a very generous donation of $500 from the Southwick Civic Fund. Uh, the donation will help to keep the price per person to $15 to complete our Jingle Bell Jubilee uh, being held on December 14th. And this is uh, requested by the Council on Aging Director, Cindy Sullivan. So, I need so moved with our thanks. All right, uh, mm -hmm. I'll second that. Roll call vote. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. And we thank the Southwick Civic Fund. All right, the next thing I have is to approve, well, I got Pioneer Valley Planning Sorry, Commission, um, a bill of $3,394.05. This is for a community block ram assistance program. This is for North Lake Engineering and Design, Housing Rehabilitation Program, our community food pantry in administration. <clears throat> and we have the itemized uh, amounts on the back. Yep. Need a motion? So moved. I will second that. Roll call vote. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. <clears throat> All right. Now, the next thing I have here is I guess things are a little, am I reading this wrong or it looks like the, we're out of things are a little out of order? Just to, uh, okay. you're out of me. I'm out of order. This court's out of order. Uh, Town of Southwick, notice of a public hearing, select board tax classification for fiscal 23. Uh, the select board will hold a public hearing on Monday, November 7th, uh, 2022 at 6.05 p.m. in the select board conference room. This is something that we do annually. Uh, we get a uh, recommendation or report from our board of assessors. And then uh, we take input from anyone that would like to speak on the issue. And then the select board takes a vote. All right, next is, uh, now it looks like. Uh, I skipped ahead. You Just skipped one ahead. page and to pull out the two. All right, two we'll, applications. we'll do that. And then we'll go back yeah. to, to uh, the, accepting the bid on that. All right, we have two applications for uh, uh, firefighter. One is a firefighter paramedic. Is, is the other one a firefighter paramedic too or a firefighter EMT or just a firefighter? Siegel, uh, Siegel is firefighter only and Drennan is firefighter paramedic. 
It's, okay. on, it's right on your agenda. Okay, I see it now. I, I didn't see it on the applications, but thank you. Uh, Anthony Siegel uh, is a requesting a just to be a firefighter. Um, Anthony is the son of Joseph Siegel, who was a former firefighter who um, we lost. Passed away in the line of duty. In the line of duty. So uh, that's commendable that his son wants to uh, follow in his father's footsteps. And the other is Matthew Drennan, uh, who's looking to be appointed a firefighter slash paramedic. So do you want to do them separately, Doug, or do you want to do both of them together? I think we should do them separately and to note that these are for call force and per diem positions only. Okay. So I'll make a motion to appoint uh, Anthony Segal, Siegel. Siegel, sorry, um, as a firefighter. I'll second that. Roll call vote. Russ Fakdai. Doug Mogonai. All right. Next motion. I'll make a motion for Matthew Drennan as a firefighter paramedic per diem. Uh, I will second that. Uh, roll call vote. Russ Fakdai. Doug Mogonai. Well, these, these Just to remind you, those will both there, require physicals and all the other standards set by the fire chief. The yada yada. Okay, we thank you. Yaddy, yaddy. So the, the, the two applicants here are going to be, uh, one is going to be a call firefighter and one will probably be a per diem firefighter medic. Just to be clear. Thank you. Uh, okay. Now, the next thing I had under here was to accept the bid yeah. Um, we days. got we got one more thing ahead of that. It's to okay. authorize the on your your amended agenda to authorize the chair to sign the MOA with the local police union to for that backfill for the officer on light duty. We don't have it in our our folder. I see it on the amended yeah, agenda. It's right here. So okay, yeah, it's in the action folder. It's in the this red is a mem memorandum of understanding with local police union to backfill an officer uh, who was injured, um, not on duty, uh, to fill a position of light duty. Right. That was a previous issue you had met with the police chief about, and you had um, okayed that to be negotiated, and now it's coming before you in public session to act on. Okay. And, and this is something where the chief, when I spoke to him, uh, felt that uh, they have adequate work for this officer, uh, since it is gonna be uh, approximately a year where he's gonna be out of work, of out of work being able to do a, his full job. Right, the chief has plenty of issues under his right of assignment um, authority to keep this person um, taken care of with those other types of uh, projects. So I'll make a motion to approve the, the memorandum of agreement between the town of Southwick and the Southwick Police Officers Coalition dated uh, 1024 uh, for the light duty for the injured officer. I will second that. Roll call vote. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. Okay. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. Did we sign the other one the other while we're at it? Yep. Yeah. This is the one we already voted on. This is the UPSCU. We have to sign it. Next up. All right, then the next thing I have is to authorize a special payroll warrant for separation pay. And this is involving uh, retiring Chief uh, Anderson. And this takes place of the first thing that we were going to do on the, uh, on the agenda. So right, to, it's um, a better alternative in lieu of um, how that process gets calculated through the retirement board. Uh, the, that other change would not have been... Um, uh, the best way to address that issue. So this is a better alternative and uh, he's good with it and Labor Council's good with it and Laura's good with it. Okay. So do we need a motion on that, Carl? Or You know, I mean, just a, just a, just a statement in your minutes, you know, clarification okay. that you're, you support that being done for that issue, you know, for the fire chief for his retirement because of, of the other issues he's got to deal with for timing. 
Okay. Doug, okay. I'll make a motion to authorize a special payroll warrant for separation pay for outgoing Chief Anderson. I will second that to roll call vote. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. All right. Now I see what was going on. I had <laughs> the new business got slipped into the old business. So now we're going to. I'm like, so what, mine's all right. <laughs> yeah. My, well, I think Olive might have got into it or yeah. something like that. But, all right, so we already no, uh, notified everybody the tax classification hearing uh, for November 7th. And the next thing would be the allocation of ARPA funds to help with the financing of the town hall roof slash HVAC project. Mr. Steinhart, you wanna go over this? Well, yeah, I mean, obviously the, um, the bid process has gone out and you're, the original bid on the um, HVAC um, when we went to town meeting in May estimated uh, where the project was the 2.663. Um, that component was estimated at a million four eight four, and, it, and the bid came in at a million six two seven. So we have to address that issue plus the contingencies for both the roof and the HVAC project. So that brings us up uh, to the need for about another 300 in 5,000. So the way to close that gap would be to repurpose funds um, from the fiscal year 22 ARPA votes that you did. Um, the water project for Randy is done. Um, the issues relating to um, the uh, project for Dix um, gates are done because maybe we had already lowered that and used some of that for paving, but he also achieved another 17,331 in savings, repurposing the uh, set aside we were going to do for water, bubblers or fountains in public buildings. Um, although that's an important issue, the roof and the HVAC take priority over that. Um, the HVAC unit that uh, Doug was talking about with uh, uh, Mr. Sutton, that was already installed. So that $10,000 allocation, we have twenty-seven sixty-three left over. And then there was 84972 unencumbered. So that's 179565.65 that's there uh, that speaks to the issue of um, the fiscal year 22 ARPA funds. We, of course, are still carrying money to deal with Randy's uh, road project and the high speed internet. So that closes out that funding source. So we have to deal with the difference between the 305 down to the 179. And that uh, would be another $126,327.35 from the fiscal year 23 allocation. And of course, you've already given some funds for paving out of that. And you also had to handle overages for the two fire department purchases out of that. So as you all know, everything's been coming in a little higher. So what is the balance of our, the second ARPA tranche ahead of the 126.327? In your briefing packet, it shows you on a single white piece of paper. See this one, Doug? It shows you uh, that that allocation of 1,455,676.27, 400 of it went to paving, 96.04 to the truck increase cost, 6,000 to the box increase cost for 415,604, which left 1 million. $40,072.27 left. So if we ended up taking the $126,327.35 out of it, that leave you a balance of 913,744.92 approximately. So, uh, so that's... Uh, that's the issue we have to deal with and that's necessary to um, have those votes in place so that you can do two things after this. You'd be in a position to award 
the HVAC bid that's in your folder from engineer Ken Beck for Adams Plumbing and Heating. Again, for the 1624 um, And then to also have a 10% contingency for both projects. So all of those materials were put together by Laura and myself and they're in your briefing packets. All right, discussion. Discussion. Um, I'd like to take a, a different swing at it. I don't. I. I don't know if it's appropriate or if it's subject to discussion, but I'd rather see that 126 come from stabilization or another source. To be honest, I kind of was plotting on that of one million dollars to be put toward a moonshot on the high-speed internet project to to start that project off and get it rolling and get subscribers coming into it so it could dramatically reduce the amount of debt that would have to be undertaken to run the whole project for the town, which would be at about eight to $9 million. Uh, granted, 913 is pretty close. So open to the discussion, but I thought a million bucks was a nice even number to go after that. You know, obviously we have a town meeting that has to go through this town meeting plus May um, to see if the townspeople are even gonna vote to do this project. Um, and then there'd have to be a subsequent vote at a, a future date to, to bond for a significant amount of money. But an investment of a million dollars to kick the project off from kind of a windfall, not a windfall, but a, a one-time funding source that this would be something that would be, um, you know, usable and visible by everybody in, in the town of Southwark. That's just, that's my opinion. And that's how I was kind of looking at it. That's why I, I sorry, I missed this when I was going through my packet this weekend. Um, I wanted to know the balance of that ARPA money coming into this so that hopefully we'd have $1 million left. And really there's a million, 1 million and 40,000 left. That's unallocated from the ARPA so far. Yeah, I mean, obviously Doug, the mechanics of that is if you chose to put everything on hold, you'd be holding off on the award. You'd have to vote tonight to put another warrant article on the, um, the special town meeting warrant before it's posted this week. And then you'd have to wait till you went to the town meeting in November to secure those funds. And then if that vote was successful, then you'd be in a position to then go to a subsequent selectman meeting, which, would, which is not due till November 21st. So you wouldn't be getting to this issue for another, this is already three, three weeks old you wouldn't be getting to it until the um, right before Thanksgiving. I appreciate that you wanted to have this million dollars, you know, but I think 900,000 is a good amount of money too. Agreed. Um, stabilization funds, that's serious. That's serious. I mean, we used up our stabilization during uh, the 2011 snowstorm. Uh, that's what it's 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 there for for emergencies like that, and that's also a two thirds vote to get money out of stabilization. Yes, it is, sir. Right. So I hear you. I appreciate you, and I and I'd like to see us go forward on the fiber optics. I think it's the way to go. But I, I, I don't want to see this project delay. I think that these getting the roof and the HVAC done here, um, you know, we're, we're, we're seeing everything's costing more. And I'm, I'm just concerned if, if we got to a town meeting and, you know, so it, it would be my option is to uh, support using the ARPA money so that we can uh, vote to accept the. Uh, and award the bids tonight. Okay, I will bring forth that motion then to, to use the ARPA money, um, leaving an unencumbered balance of about 900 grand in the ARPA. But what was the total, 126, 327? Well, the, well the, that's from the 23. It's also from the fiscal year 22 allocation. You'd be using 179.565.65. And the total, and then adding the other one brings you up to 305.893.00. You'll see that in your 11 by 17 spreadsheet. 
I'm asking what you need a motion for, sir. So your motion would be to, uh, to take it from both fiscal year ARPA fund sources in a total amount of um, the 305 893 as read by the CAO and explained. And then once that is done and those funds are in place, then you're in a position to actually do a vote award of a bid. Until that's done, you're not in that, you're not in that uh, place. <laughs> Understood. I'll put forth a motion as read by the CAO. Uh, I'll second that motion. Roll call vote. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Moglin, aye. All right. Now we need a motion to uh, to accept the price of $1,624,000 submitted by Adams Plumbing and Heating of uh, Adams, Massachusetts. Right. As recommended by engineer Ken Beck for the HVAC improvement project at Town Hall. And you have his letter in your folder about his bid award recommendation. Correct. <clears throat> so moved. I'll second that, roll call vote. Russ Fox, aye. Doug Mogan, aye. All right, Carl, you have your money and you have uh, the authorization so that we can get both those projects going. Right, so what'll happen is at a future date, you'll have the contract will be coming in front of you to sign. Okay. Uh, Carl, new business? Uh, let's see. We continue to have regional dispatch as a meeting coming up this week. So that's got to be, uh, we're going to see how things are progressing with the bids that were opened on that and getting the radio project, um, you know, implemented so that we can begin to address that transition uh, locally. I know the police department has been working with the city of Westfield and there has been um, calls that are um, being rooted up there, but this is to continue the process of, of making the transition fully done. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, no, that's it for me. Doug, new business? Nothing for new business. Okay. All right. Then we're going down to old business. Uh, North Pond, we're still uh, uh, working on that. We'll continue having meetings. Uh, Mr. McWilliams is meeting with the police chief on a regular basis, discussing issues. We've talked to Randy about different issues. So that's a work in progress. We can now take off. Robin, the awarding of the bid, we've accomplished that. Uh, the sewer system IMA with the city of Westfield. Uh, we had a meeting um, on the 20th, Zoom meeting. Uh, myself, Randy, uh, Attorney Coyle, uh, the attorney for Westfield and their um, uh, director of uh, their uh, water treatment. Uh, there is a, uh, the attorney sent us just prior to the Zoom meeting, an agreement, mm -hmm. you know, that, uh, that we are going to review. Mr. Coyle wanted to review it. I also had a chance to uh, talk uh, very briefly with uh, uh, the mayor of Westfield uh, when I attended the uh, Greater Westfield Chamber of Commerce uh, legislative session that they uh, held here in Southwick. And uh, I've asked him for a, a meeting, a little get together to talk about different issues um, rather than just talk about numbers, but talk about uh, our relationship and uh, the uh, different things that go on between the city of Westfield and the town of Southwick. And he agreed to, uh, uh, having a follow-up meeting. So, and that would be separate from uh, any future meetings that we have uh, uh, with the, the city attorney of Westfield. So I'll keep you posted on when we have that meeting. 
Carl, I'd like you to go along and uh, yep. and Randy. Uh, okay. I think it, I think it'd be very helpful uh, that we discuss, uh, especially the transmission line. I, I don't think a lot of people realize. Uh, uh, at least the mayor wasn't aware that we're still paying for that, and and uh, Westfield's utilizing that by hooking up. Uh, their residents. So. Yes, that uh, that ended up be having a modified route, and when that modified route was done, uh, because of the new uh, route that it took, it was able to accomplish some additional hookups for the community, which is wasn't an issue from us because the the pipe was sized to handle all of our flow plus any more we ever added in anything along the way. So it was never going to be an issue for us with the sizing of the pipe. Sure. But so we, that was something that was beneficial and helpful to the, their, their community too. So in one sense, it was a win-win. So now we just need to get the other, um, you know, uh, get on the other side of this and, and have some reciprocity. Very good. All right, the next thing I have here is uh, the review of the Planning Board Comprehensive Impact Statement Handbook. That's ongoing. Yep, they're almost done. Okay. Did they vote on that, Diane? Tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. All right. Thank um, you. Marijuana dispensary, uh, we're keeping that on, uh, on the agenda. Uh, town website meeting calendars. Uh, I think Jason was working on that with uh, Jim Middleton. Uh, we have a uh, special town meeting, November 15th. I think uh, uh, Carl will have to set up uh, a time with uh, Ken to uh, film going over the both articles yep. so that we can get that on channel 15. Okay. And I'll make sure I'll... that Ken reaches out to you and you can do the, uh, the meet and greet with him. All right. And uh, unless, did you want to handle that because of more in-depth knowledge of, well, no, I take it back. I'll handle it. I'll just get together with you at some point to go over the article concerning the uh, creating the municipal light plant, mm -hmm. just so that I have uh, enough information to try to explain to people exactly what we're trying to achieve. Yeah, that or we could do it split. Okay. Cover one, I'll cover one. Either okay. Way, yeah, that's an idea. That's a good idea. We'll split. I'll do one article. You could do the other article. Okay. I'll let Ken know you're going to do that. Okay. Uh, the Spirit Walk uh, put on by the Historical Society. This Saturday. This Saturday. Uh, you have to call and make reservations. Um, People in the cemetery do not need reservations. That's correct. <laughs> uh, I mean, people, uh, I have the telephone number here. People listening at home want it is 569-0275. Um, they can also go to the Historical Society website, and I'm sure they have uh, that information there. Or a lot of notifications were done uh, this past week. I, it was my turn to do the monthly around Southwick. And uh, I was able to uh, go over quite a few different dates and times, places, and people just have to go on the uh, town website and go to, what is it, Channel 15, and then look for the program. And I would uh, suggest uh, every person in the town of South Sea should probably go on there and listen to that program. Might want to skip the first two minutes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, the next thing I have here is the, uh, we're uh, redoing the advertisement for the assistant uh, chief administrative officer position in recruitment. Right, that was worked on. Robin and uh, Lisa are sending that out to the other um, avenues we used before. Okay. And the last thing that's on the agenda here is the marijuana host agreement for Hudson Drive facility. Um, we went back and forth with council on that. Council's got it in their channel of work to do to revise the, a draft community host agreement based on the latest uh, changes in the law. All right, and this is the facility, a Grove facility at the former Rose House uh, on, Hudson Drive. on Hudson Drive. 
Yeah, no, my, my follow-up question on that, Doug, since you are the uh, point person for the board, is that also going to necessitate having to redo the one for down the street for Calyx and Pistols? Stay tuned. So, and it and the other thing too is, you know, it's been a while. They were supposed to give us an update on where they stand. You um, know, I meant to drive down there, Carl, again. And I think yeah, I didn't pay attention. There was a for sale sign out in front of the property the last time I drove down there. There it is. It's still there? Right. Okay. But yeah, so, my way home. so we'll have to get some clarification. I, I would like to invite them in for an update meeting with the board. I think that's an excellent idea. Excellent okay. idea. Can and and why we're why we're talking about inviting people in, uh, when I was at the Greater Westfield Chamber of Commerce uh, Legislative Luncheon, I did talk to the executive director of that uh, organization, and uh, I invited him to attend a meeting. Uh, future meeting so we could talk about uh, the different work the, the chamber does and how we can work with the chamber. I know that we're a member uh, through our Economic Development Commission. Um, uh, Mr. McMahon uh, uh, attends a, a lot of their meetings on a regular basis. So, hmm. so, so at some point, we'll have to uh, uh, invite that gentleman in. Okay, what we'll do, Mr. Chairman, is uh, um, if you've got the contact or, or, you know, I'll have Robin give him a call and we'll get some dates that meet our meeting schedule. Okay, sounds good. Old business, Mr. Steinhardt? Uh, nothing this evening, sir. All right, I have about 15 announcements. And if I, I miss anything? I got your back. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, tomorrow night, the Southwick Civic Fund is holding their Hidden Heroes celebration. It's going to be at 6 p.m. at the Southwick Regional School. It's open to the public. And this is where they're going to be honoring uh, people that uh, helped out during the COVID pandemic uh, at the beginning uh, and kept uh, really government open. So, uh, so that, that uh, certainly is very important. I've already mentioned the Spirit Walk that the Historical Society will be doing this Saturday from 1 to 4 p.m. And that later that day is the trunk or treat that is going to be at Wally Park. And that's between 4.30 and 7. And that's for the towns of Southwick, Tallinn, and Granville. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Didi, are you, uh, as uh, president of the Civic Fund, are there still openings for people to participate in that? Do you know? I believe there's one or two spots available, yes. So if there are some people out there that would still want to participate, uh, uh, they could contact us. I think we have an application form here we could give them or, or yep. we could send them to the Civic Fund. Uh, you could put them in contact with the person that uh, runs that. Absolutely. Thank you. And we're always Thank looking you. for candy. Even if you can't participate and you want to drop some candy off, we'll gladly get it to them. Okay. The next thing I had here is our Economic Development Commission is going to be holding a job fair Wednesday, November 2nd from 4.30 to 7 p.m. here in the auditorium. We're not doing that. We've got early elections. That was something that Lisa and Mike McMahon talked about when we caught it in the book and that can't happen here, not in the auditorium. All right, do we know if they're going to be, can we get clarification I, so well, that we can- you know, Between the both of us, we have spoken to him. Okay. He never filled out an application for use of facilities or anything. Okay, can we get a clarification tomorrow because he did hand me a, uh, a pamphlet yeah. or a, or a how long ago? Like this weekend? Uh, no, this is when I attended their meeting. Yeah. So, okay, if we could just get clarification, you know. Yeah, uh, we might we might just move them into the community center. Right, or or if they're postponing it, or what's going on on that? Okay, and then we can try to get a press release out one way or another. Um, the next thing I had is uh, uh, we do have an election. 
on the 8th of November. And I wanna emphasize that for Michelle Hill, our town clerk, treasurer collector, that early voting began this Saturday. Uh, would they have 40 or 50 people that voted Saturday? 40, uh, I was informed it was 49 votes, Mr. Chairman. 49 votes Saturday, uh, but they are gonna be opened up uh, during the afternoon this week from 12 p.m. to 4.30 p.m. Um, Monday through Friday. And then they will be open next Saturday, I believe all day from nine to five. And then the following uh, days, just prior to the election to the fourth, will be voting from 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Uh, some on November 2nd to 7.30 p.m. and on November 4th to 5 p.m. And that's done right here in the auditorium. Uh, so if there's probably going to be a fairly high turnout of voters for this election, it's uh, to choose our next governor. So that usually you get a higher number of people. So uh, we have the staff here. So if people wanted to come down and vote early, uh, I think they'd be greatly appreciate it. And it'd be uh, a lot easier for parking for the day of the election. And the next thing I had is the VFW will be having the Veterans Day Parade on Friday, November 11th at 11 a.m. They'll be assembling at the uh, across from the Summer House as usual, and then uh, marching to the uh, beautiful new uh, Town Common uh, uh, to honor our veterans. And also, I should have mentioned on Wednesday, November 9th, from 6 to 9 p.m., the Southwick Firemen's Association will be holding its second annual bingo at the Southwick Recreation Center. Uh, they did it last year, and they're going to do a, another one this year. And, and we certainly uh, support our fire association. hope people will turn out for that. So that, I think, covers all the announcements that I had. Doug, did I miss any or some that you had that I didn't have? Uh, <clears throat> just one that I had that you didn't have. And that was, uh, we had a fantastic weather day on Saturday for our farm parade. Thank you to the Civic Fund and everyone who pitched in to make that a rousing success. Um, it seemed to be very well attended, um, both with people lining the streets, plus tractors, plus animals. Um, and I think, I fear that the next day we have as nice as that, it's going to be in March. So it was a beautiful day to have a parade in our town. Uh, absolutely. I'll ditto to that. Uh, it was, it was great. A great, uh, number of people lining the streets. Um, we didn't get as many animals that you'd like to see as that we did that first time the parade was done, but a lot of a lot of tractors, a lot of other involvement from the farming community. So it was just great, absolutely great. So again, thank you to the Civic Fund and all the other parties involved uh, in putting that together. Is there anything else? I just have a couple of things. Um, I did attend a honest. This really happened. Marijuana roundtable on Zoom. Uh, with Pioneer Valley Planning, and they had a person from the Cannabis Control Commission drop in for the first 10 minutes and give us their take on how they're going to direct all this, the cities and towns in the Commonwealth. The Cannabis Control Commission, much like every other division of government in the Commonwealth, started out as a great idea and then usurps the power of the localities to rule by fiat, and this is no different. They are now taking over 100%. They now have review and um, review authority over all current and future um, memorandums of understandings or community host agreements with all towns. They're also going to sunset all of the existing community host agreements. Um, and any community host agreement, um, other than the local tax, but any impact fees will sunset automatically after eight years, regardless of what it says in an agreement signed between two willing parties. Um, to me that I wasn't a big fan of the 
I always, when, when we negotiated with um, the first applicant, we made them give us a balance sheet and an income statement to understand 3% of what, because they said, oh, we're going to give you 3%, well, 3% of what? So we could see that it, it measured up against what the actual impact of the community is. Um, so we, I think our agreement was somewhat different than that, but a lot of communities signed up and said, oh, 3%, 3%, and they've spent the money and now they're getting sued to get the money back. The Cannabis Control Commission is saying, look, you guys can't do that anyway um, after um, eight years. Um, the other big deal that they're working on is, um, there's two big pieces that they're working on right now. One is social consumption, which I mentioned when we talked last, that that's coming, it's certainly coming. And um, I'll have to clarify my own notes here, but there's gonna be two ways for communities that wanna opt into social consumption um, if they want it. And then the other piece that they're working on is um, social equity. And actually towns will be held liable and not be eligible to collect the local impact, either the impact fee and or the tax. I'd have to again, check my notes again. Um, if they don't meet the, the thresholds as set forth by the uh, Cannabis Control Commission, which are a movable goalpost. Um, right now there's 89 operator, operational cultivators in the state, 27 more in process and um, 20, 17 economic empowerment uh, units have opened with 24 social equity uh, empowerment units have opened already. So that's gonna be a big part of their whole process. When we first met with um, different groups during our, our subcommittee several years ago, one of, the, one of the groups had come in and it was there. They had very different opinions on who should be granted a license. Um, and as far as from a business acumen, from being a prior convicted felon that may have been adversely affected by, by previous law. Um, and you've seen that at the federal level where Correct. they, they um, whatever the word pardon. is, pardon certain folks at a federal level. And now that was really a first step because that's really just an encouragement for the local governors to pardon state criminals. Because there's very few federal people that have been Correct. sentenced for marijuana convictions that, uh, that met the standard uh, that Biden. Yeah, there's it's like seven, Biden eight thousand. Actually pardoned, right? It's a very mm -hmm. short list, but it's it's the impetus to do that at the state level. So that all of those things are, are are still coming to fruition. We should still continue to have the conversation. Again, I'm still very concerned about the movable goalposts that that the state is now doing. And um, former state rep or Senator Vega, who now is the economic director in Polio, yep. yes, uh, yes. absolutely went crazy. Mm -hmm. Uh, after that. And the guy from Cannabis Control Commission checked out and Vega spoke at the meeting at length, kind of along these lines that they are just operating on a different planet, either from an economic development perspective or from the needs and wants of what the local communities want. There's a big separation right now between the, um, the triple C and, and other interested parties. So a lot to play out there. Right. The uh, state legislature could enact some state laws that could modify that agency's ability to make those rulemaking decisions. They will eventually shoot themselves enough in the foot that it's gonna drive legislative action, just as you mentioned. Um, other things of note, on our town website, um, on any board or commission now, there's a link that shows the appointment list for that board, or you can go to uh, onboard.southwickma.org and see every single board and commission and the people that are appointed or elected and their, their start date and end date of their term. That was part of the pro action process we had taken uh, well over a year ago now. So that's finally live. There's only one error left on there that I let Michelle Hill know about the other day. And that's the master plan advisory subcommittee has the wrong chairman. Um, the chairman of the planning board is ex officio on that board. And Marcus Phelps is the chairman of the master plan advisory committee. But I didn't see any other errors and I didn't see any other emails back from others that there were a lot of them. So it's a lot of moving parts to get that website working. I appreciate Michelle and everyone else's help to get that going. So that's going. Um, and then my <clears throat> second to last update is uh, Congamon water testing. I did receive a couple emails on that. I've talked to Alex Blair a couple of times. I've been working with him in Middleton to try to get a separate web page set up so that we're able to post 
uh, water testing results. And as we meet over the winter and figure out when and where we're gonna do those tests, but it's also very important. I had a conference call with Dick Grinnells the other day. He called me out of concern that we're gonna give people direction that it is or isn't safe to ever swim in Congamon Lake. To be clear, we've said it a thousand times, this is a thousand and one, is that the testing is only at a point in time and place in the lake. You have to make your own decision for yourself and your family at every, any given time. Um, and again, myself, uh, some folks from Lake Management, Dr. Muller and uh, Mr. White are gonna be getting together over the winter to try to figure out the protocol and the who and the how. Um, and lastly, high-speed internet was supposed to meet last week and we did not get a quorum. So we're gonna to try to pull together another schedule to get ahead, get together ahead of the special in case we need to have a handout or something ahead of that meeting. Other than that, that Mr. Chairman. All right. All right, Carl, you're set, Doug set, I'm set. Yep. I don't <clears throat> believe there's any need for an executive session. We're shorthanded anyway, so. Nope. Not at this I, time. I am going to accept a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second, roll call vote, Rose Fox, aye. Doug, aye. All right, good night and thank you. Thank you. Thank you.